All right. I think we are recording. Does anybody see the recording button? Yes. Yep, we are recording. Hi, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to quickly introduce and thank you all for coming. Uh, this is the peaceful transition of power. Uh, how to use teaching, leadership, and good archiving to ensure success after you leave your organization. And uh, my name is Jeff Wakeman. I'm the Director of Student Development, and many of you know me who are involved in clubs and organizations because uh, I, I talk to you all the time, and I'm sure you're tired of hearing from me. So that's why we have a special guest with us. Uh, Heather, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Jeff, and thanks for having me, everyone. Uh, my name is Heather Perez, and I am the Special Collections Librarian here at Stockton University. And that also means that I cover our university archives, which is what we'll talk a little bit about and decide, you know, how student organizations can can uh, contribute to the archives. Awesome. And uh, we, we are going to definitely start with a, a little bit of a thought question here. And uh, I know there's a couple students on the line and we'll just ask them if they want to answer to just go ahead and un unmute themselves and answer the question. Uh, if you're new to your, when you were, think back to when you were new to your organization, when you were like the first, you first became president or vice president or whatever your position is, uh, what was the piece of information that you didn't have? and that you wish someone would have told you, uh, you know, maybe it was a login, maybe it was how to do a piece of paperwork. What was like the first thing you were like, huh, I don't know how to do this. I mean, I'm still pretty new to the organization. Like this is actually my first semester being the VP. So I Hi, guess- Hi, Michelle. Oh, and you're, the, you're the VP of, uh, of uh, Habitat for Humanity, right? Yep. Awesome. So go ahead, so, tell us. Um, I guess it's just, it's not even the, like, I'm going to say it's probably like the paperwork maybe, or like the, the things that you're going to have to do, like with all of that, that I feel like would be probably the most difficult thing. And I'd probably want more help with. Yeah, great. That's absolutely one of the things that I think we hear a lot of times with new leaders is like, oh, I didn't know how to do the paperwork or I didn't have the paperwork or I, I didn't even know that there was paperwork. So uh, that that's really what we're talking about today. And that's transitioning to your, your organization to the new leadership. So yeah, we're just going to jump right in on it. Let's see if I get my slide to advance. I got to get my cursor in the right place. There we go. Um, we, we, we already met Heather and I'm going to throw this to Heather because I didn't even know we had a university archive until recently. Can you, uh, talk a little bit about your position? What is the archive? Why it's important? And maybe for the university, what the clubs and organizations can do with them? Sure. Yes, definitely. Um, so we do have a university archive. It's in the lower level of the library, E055. And uh, you can kind of see it over my shoulder here through the window, perhaps, as I'm talking. Uh, but I did bring a couple things in here for show and tell. University Archive really is the place where we store the things that tell the story of Stockton. So they tell the story of our history, how we were founded. It tells the story of how we got going. It tells the story of uh, the first students, but it tells the story of today also. The different things that we do and the different programs that we have, the different student groups, the different student activities, um, all of the things that make Stockton Stockton, we like to collect here for our university archives. So as an example here, um, some of the things that people use to do research about our university are the Board of Trustees minutes, telling about the different decisions that the trustees made for Stockton to get us going and, and also to keep us going. Is also, that like a bound book? Um, yeah, we do cool. have them bound. Yep, yep. This is uh, from 2015. So we have them, like all the minutes bound in these, in these books uh, to make them easier to store and to use. Oh, excellent. We also have all of the yearbooks. This is the very first one from 1981. Um, and people, of course, love to come in and look at the old pictures. Some kids have even found their parents in here if their parents were alum. Um, and they're really great sources of information about different activities that were going on on campus, different sports groups, gonna things like that. Oh, stop the share and pin your there video you so we can all see there it. There you go. Sure. Um, and then on the student side, we don't have that much. And actually, that's one of the things that I'm hoping that we can get across today with our chat today, um, because we have very little in the way of student life. We do have the student senate minutes. So we also have these bound uh, for some of the years. And we have all of the different decisions and things that the student senate made. 
Um, and then we have these two scrapbooks from Phi Data Kappa from the 1980s. Uh, they included their minutes, they included their membership lists, they included their bylaws and constitution, and they also gave us this really great scrapbook of like different programs and photographs and activities that the students were involved in in the 1980s. Um, but that's about it, sadly, from the student organizations. We don't have um, a lot of information about the different student organizations. I have a list of different student organizations, but we don't have things from the actual organizations themselves talking about their activities, talking, talking about their events, talking about who they are and what they do. And so that's really an area that I want us to improve on because the Stockton Archives needs to represent the students as much as it does any other aspect of Stockton. And so that's something that I'm hoping that we can all work together on. That's awesome. Uh, I also know you have a decent amount of digital collections, and I, and I put that in the slide here because I know I have used the Argo collections digitally uh, pr pretty extensively. Uh, frequently, I get asked questions like, oh, in what year did this thing change at or what did this club or whose club is the oldest? And a lot of times I can find, you know, articles in the Argo that explain what was happening at that time. And so that's it's a great resource. Thank you. Yes. Um, and you can find all of the digital collections by going to the library website, clicking on the special collections button and then clicking on digital collections. We do have the Argo there. We also have some of the older um, university newsletters and things like from the 1970s and early 1980s. Um, you know, it's a great way to find out maybe when your club started, if you want to write a history of your club, and we'd be happy to help you with that if you're interested in writing a history for yourself. And uh, I don't want to bury the lead here, but... When we talk about our presentation today, we're going to end it with what you can do to make sure your stuff is in the archive. So hold on to that while we talk about some of the more interesting things about passing the torch. And, and this is where we're going to get into today's topic. Um, and that's why we asked, what was the things that you were most confused about? Um, basically, the problem that we see all the time is there's a strong leader in a club or organization, and they're really good, and they have a really strong organization, and they graduate, or they go on student teaching, or they go to study abroad, and all of a sudden, the club is kind of lost. The students who have taken over don't really have all the same functions. They don't have all the same information that they need. Sometimes they don't even realize the person is gone and they just realize, hey, nobody's here to be president. So I guess I'm president. And, you know, that that's that that's becomes a problem with our office, not with our office, but it becomes a problem with the organization because they really lose time. Uh, to, to really do some of the great things that they do. So, um, and, you know, and here's a list. You can read it right on the screen. I don't need to read to everybody. We're all college people. <laughs> um, but like, sometimes they didn't even hold an election. <laughs> sometimes they don't, they don't know who the president is. Sometimes they don't have the basics like the logins. So uh, that's what we're really talking about today is, is how do we fix all of these problems? And probably the most important thing that can get lost when there's a, a, a power, not I want to say, I want to say an information vacuum is the history and the mission of the organization because the past is so important to what the organization is going to do. And the mission and the vision of the organization really creates the legacy of that organization. So like, just think about how much you care about your organization and what you think is important for that organization. How would you feel if everything changed after you graduated? And, and how much work you put into making sure the values and, and mission is understood. If the new people came in and just changed it all, wouldn't you be like, oh, but that's not the same thing. And that, that's really what we're talking about here is carrying on those mission and the vision and the purpose and the values. Uh, because the past is important. The past is important because it tells us how to live in the future. I want to talk really quickly about one of my favorite organizations of all time. It was at a previous institution, and it was called the Marked Dance Project, and it was a dance organization for students with disabilities. So it was a great organization, and it was started by this freshman whose first name was Mark. 
and he named the organization after himself and he was the head teacher and the head the the, the motivator and the driving factor he was a modern dancer who had a disability and you know he brought this great and wonderful thing that he had been doing in his high school for a little while to the college and for the four years that he was a student it was one of the greatest organizations that existed on campus. They were doing great work. They were doing great events. Everybody knew him. Everything was, everybody was just so excited by what he was doing. And then when he graduated, it completely fell apart. And it completely fell apart because he hadn't ever empowered anyone with the mission or the vision or the purpose to continue it. And they didn't even think they should continue it because they weren't Mark. And they weren't, how can they be the Mark Dance Project if they're not Mark? And, and that was uh, you know, a bit of a failing because what he wanted is he wanted it to last forever. And he didn't mean to, 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 to hold the power, it just kind of happened. So I always want to, want to, want to kind of like get you to think about that because it's the current leadership's job to make sure they are passing the torch, okay? This is the whole, you know, just think about the Olympics, you know, not one person carries the flame forever. So you have to make sure you're setting up the future leaders for success. So you have to make sure that all of the members really feel included in the organization. When it's the Mark Dance Project, if you're not Mark, you don't feel like a leader. Okay, you have to make sure everyone understands the goals and the missions of, uh, of the leadership. Uh, if you don't understand what you're doing or why you're doing or all the people don't understand, it's going to be hard for them to do it when you leave. Two of the most important things are groom new leadership. If you don't think about leaving your organization before you leave and really think about who should be taking over and making sure that they're prepared, it's, it's going to be a bit of a surprise when all of a sudden they're in charge. And two of the ways that you can do that is when you walk out the door, you make sure everything is in place. And really importantly to today's discussion, that you leave good records. All right. We're going to talk about what is good records. So let's talk about how you can build inclusion. Inclusion with all the members. Inclusion isn't just a term about diversity, but it's also making sure that everyone feels like they have ownership of the organization. And by the way, this should be your goal the entire time that you are a leadership in a club organization. It shouldn't just be right before you walk out the door. And, and how do you get people to feel that it is their club too? By sharing the leadership by making sure everyone has a chance to lead the organization at least a little bit, by delegating meaningful responsibilities, not just the jobs you don't want to do, or not just the crappy jobs, or not just the less important jobs. Delegate the meaningful responsibilities. And what I talk about all the time in having a good club organization is mission-based programs and understandings. If you're the literature club, you should be doing literature stuff. If you're Habitat for Humanity, you should not only be going out and doing builds, which is fun and great, and people learn a lot, but you should also be having discussions about the housing crisis in America so that people understand why it is that, there, that poverty housing exists and what's happening in that community to make sure that poverty housing can be corrected, not just for the family you're building for today, but in policy and all those other things. So mission-based programs and discussions is just tremendously important. I mean, have fun too. I'm not saying don't have fun. I'm just saying, you know, make sure you're doing your mission. So the one thing that uh, a lot of times people do by accident and they don't do it really thoughtfully is grooming new leaders, okay? This is where you just really need to teach the people around you how to do all the little things. Like Michelle brought up before, how do you do the paperwork? How do you take minutes? How do you run meetings? How do you book a room? How do you ask for finances from the student senate? Uh, and then you also have to encourage the best people in the organization to step up and be responsible. Uh, if you're the only person running a meeting, you have to basically tell someone, hey, this meeting, you run it. 
this meeting, you take care of it. Or I really want you to make this project happen. And, and you need to empower everyone in the organization. And empower is a tricky word. If you delegate and you say, do this because I'm telling you, they're not going to feel like they're in charge. But if you say, hey, I love that idea. I want you to do it and do it great without my inclusion because I trust you and I think you're going to be a great leader. That's an empowering way to delegate responsibility. And man, this is the hard one. Start stepping away early. If you know you have a year until graduation, now is the time to start making sure other people are doing things. Um, I definitely know a lot of people who don't run to be president in their senior year so that they can be vice president and help whoever the new leadership is. So, you know, think about stepping away early when you're still around to help everyone. And yes, there's my boy Obi-Wan saying, you were the chosen one, because I think that's, that's what times a lot of people feel like, I chose you to be the president after me. And then I left and I came back two years later and the organization wasn't around anymore. And it, it really hurts someone who is just really dedicated to the organization. So walk out with everything in place. Um, anyone who has ever been a server in a restaurant knows that the closing shift has to take care of the opening shift. So this is really important when you're closing and you're leaving that you set everything up right. Open, robust elections. Everyone needs to know elections is coming up. Everyone needs to know, hey, I'm graduating, so president is open, and I want y'all to run for president, and I want everyone to feel included, because if you feel that you've selected the new leadership or that you were able to step up in the new leadership, it's a lot easier to support the new leadership. Okay, make sure that your budget request is in, all right? Make sure the new officers who are coming up help with the budget so they know what's in it. If you, if you put in a budget that says you're going to conference A and you're going to, you know, sell concert B, hopefully the new leadership knows to walk in and start planning conference A and, and, and concert B. All right. Digital access. Every year somebody emails me and says, hey, can you give me the password to my Facebook page? And I'm like, no, I don't have the passwords to your Facebook page or your Gmail account. Now, the Osprey Hub, I can definitely help you with. But all of that social media stuff, I, I don't have. Most of the students hold that themselves. Physical stuff. Every year, if there's materials to pass on, whether it be a notebook or a file or a, a set of keys, you know, we, we need to make sure that we're physically handing these physical attributes to the new officers. Um, leave good records. By the way, that is my favorite record of all time right there. Uh, if you don't, if you're not taking meeting minutes, it's hard to hand a pile of meeting minutes to the new leadership if you've never written them down or typed them. So really, this is another thing that you should be doing way before you're ready to leave. Take meeting minutes. We have a whole YouTube thing about how to take good meeting minutes and how to run good digital meetings. If you haven't seen that, we can put up the link later. Um, but minutes are important because it shows what you talked about, who voted for what, who was present at the meeting, and all the, the, the things that you're doing, like the marketing and the finance and what events you're doing. So all of those kinds of things, basically, who was at the meetings, what did you talk about, who voted for what, what did you choose to spend your money on, all of that should be included in your meeting minutes and all of that is just vital information to be passed on. So how can you keep these? And we're going to get into some of the other ones in just a minute when I pass over to Heather. But I got to put a, put a pitch out here for Osprey Hub. Osprey Hub has collects everything. Everything you do inside Osprey Hub is held. So if you put in an event, 10 years later, I can look back at what the event was. If you do a news story with pictures about the beach cleanup you just did, those pictures, that date, and what you said about it at that time is a frozen record that stays alive inside the Osprey Hub connected to your organization for all of time. Uh, gallery. Gallery is there, so post those pictures. Any documents you want to load, any forms you create. If you hold the elections online, 
how many people voted for who is there and who run and who lost. That is one of the great lost histories of student clubs organizations was who didn't win the election. We always know who the next president is, but we never know who it was that also was involved in that organization. And obviously all of the finances, all of the money that you spend, all of the requests you do are all held in there. So yeah, this is it. The Osprey Hub is a great place to put it. If you have recordings, you can put them up. If you have a USB drive, if you have shared folders, if you have photo albums, lockers, office files, all of these things really could should be handed down. Um, now we're going to talk about where you do these things. So obviously Osprey Hub is one of them, but the advisors are here. So in StuDev, we have advisors. Uh, you can oh, you have an advisor, faculty or staff advisor. You could drop that notebook with them. And probably Heather is now about to tell us how cool it is to drop it off at the library. Heather, do you want to jump in here or should I? Yes, definitely. Okay, Thanks. go ahead. Um, yeah, you know, if it's something that you're not going to need back right away, or if it's something that you're just going to want to consult every once in a while, you know, maybe to write your five-year history or your 10-year history for your anniversary of your organization, um, do, yes, please drop it off at the archives. If it's paper material, um, we're happy to come over and bring a box and box it up and take it away for you. We're happy to talk with you about it. We're happy to take a look at any digital files you have. Um, so yes, please do reach out and let us know um, how we can help archive your history. Um, I think we can probably even figure out a way to give you some archives boxes and folders if you've got a bunch of paper stuff that you want to organize and give to the archives afterwards. We have special boxes that keep things around forever, they tell us. Um, <laughs> and so if you have paper-based files that you want us to have, please just let me know and I'll come and help you get them. Um, if you have digital files that you want us to take uh, or want us to take uh, have copies of, we'd love to have that too. Um, and the last question on that list, it says, should we be redundant and make backups? Yes, a thousand times, yes, please. <laughs> you never know when something's going to crash. You never know when somebody might lose access to something. So I do definitely recommend having copies, even if you've uploaded it to Osprey Hub, if you also have like a club Google Drive where you keep drafts of different things or where you keep working documents that you guys are going back and forth on before you upload them to Osprey Hub, you know, definitely keep copies of things and make sure that you're sharing, you know, that Google Drive with the next generation of leadership uh, before that before you graduate and go off. Yeah, and I want to put a plug in here. If you have something that's really old, that you're like, yeah, this really isn't important to me anymore. I don't know who all these people are with the big hair and the 80s, like this photo album, this is just so old, it's not useful to me. That's what you really need to make sure it gets in the archive because those kind of kind of older records are, are just the greatest thing, right, Heather? I mean, no, I, that, that's those the are history. The treasures. Yeah, those are definitely the treasures. Please don't toss them, call us first. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, let's go on to the next slide here. Come on, there we go. All right, so hopefully you are not organizing like this picture. Um, That's this is, what my office looks like. I'm gonna oh, freely admit to This is my to nightmare, you. right? <laughs> um, hopefully you have, either somebody has already created an organization for you or a strategy for organizing for you. But if not, and if you are the, the poor soul that has to actually figure it out, um, let your actual organization reflect how you're going to organize things. If your organization is built around events, then that should be what your primary way of organizing things is. You know, have a folder for each event that you're hosting. Or if your organization is all about, um, well, I guess for Habitat for Humanity, if you're all about the different service projects that you're doing, maybe you have one each semester and you organize it by semester. Or if you are an organization that um, is all about sports, you know, maybe you have different dates of your sports uh, events, you know, different tournaments and things. So let the way that your organization runs dictate how you organize your records. Um, if you have actual paper documents, like I was saying, you know, we can put them in folders and boxes or binders, uh, organize them maybe by date, maybe each, you know, academic year or each uh, leadership group cohort uh, organizes them that way. Um, if you have digital, uh, please don't just dump them all in one folder, go ahead and take the time to create a folder for your minutes or create a folder for your membership lists or create a folder for um, your finance records so that you have those all divided out and organized in a way that it makes it easier for somebody to find the next time around. Um, it doesn't take 
too long, you know, if you, you're just dumping them all in one folder, it doesn't take too long for them to become overwhelming. You have hundreds and hundreds of files and nobody can find what they're actually looking for. So do go ahead and make individual folders for that. Um, and when you're making those folders, when you're putting, putting those files into the folders, try to come up with a good scheme to organize the, the files. Um, Jeff, am I able to share my screen for just a second? Uh, you should be. Try it. If not, I right. will. Right. Oh, wait, I think I have to stop the share. Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. All right. Let me see if I can find the thing that I want to share. Hold on just a second. So I created this, this uh, fictitious student organization just to give us a, a way of uh, sharing, but I'm not sure if it's going to let me share my desktop. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. All right. So I created this um, fictional... I'm just going to make it a little bit larger so we can see what's going on there. Okay. That, that's so funny. You said the fictional organization, the students, the Harry Potter heads. Yeah. We've actually had a group who wanted to start a Harry Potter club and they oh. never finished. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> uh, my kids are reading the books right now. So that made me think of it. So this, this fictional group, they have their folder for their bylaws and constitution. And inside that folder, they have one folder for the old versions so that you can always re realize, you can always keep track of what the old version is versus the new version. And here it looks like they were drafting their new version because there's a draft here with a date. And it looks like there was another version that was approved. So I've got I've got that labeled that way so that people, the next generation can tell what's going on with those. Then, you know, they've got their different activities. They've got them organized here by academic year so that you can see which activities they have going on in each year. And then I've got their minutes also organized by act uh, academic year and their e-board minutes are different from their general board meetings. This is a very organized group, of course, but you know it doesn't have to be exactly <laughs> like this. And then they've got their membership lists, and they have a list of their officers, and then they have two different membership lists in here. Now, one thing I did was I created a README file, and it says, first, how to organize your files. So you can give the next generation instructions on how to do that right here, right up front. You know, Put the file in this folder. Make this folder or make this file name this thing with the date in it so that we can tell what's different. And then I created a README second to tell the next generation what happened to those paper files. Oh no, there used to be a box of photographs. Where did it go? Well, in here you can tell them that it went to the university ar archives so that they can come to us and ask us questions later on. So this is just one example of how to organize your digital files. I'll admit that I am uh, very uh, picky when it comes to my digital files. I like folders within folders within folders and maybe you are not that strict with yourself. Um, but uh, that is one way of organizing things. All right. When we go back to the other share, sure, go right ahead. Yeah. All right. There you go. Uh, I love your naming conventions. I, um, I helped create the Osprey hub when we brought it here, not the software package that we purchased from the company, but when we started designing it, we really talked very specifically as an office about how are we going to create the names and how are we going to use the files so that way they stay obvious to find. Like if you put the year first, then it alphabetizes by the year. So it's just, just little things like that. Great, great information. Thank you, Heather. Keep going. Sure. You can go to the next slide. Oh, the like. next slide. There we oh, go. and I'll, I'll just mention, you. Re there really is no need to keep more than three copies of anything unless it's a handout that you give out all the time. Um, you know, three copies will ensure that you have a copy to give away, a copy to make a copy from, and a copy to archive. So I, I encourage you to go ahead and throw away anything that has more than three copies if you have paper records. Um, and then the... Uh, the the ultimate goal, I hope, or, or one of the goals of your organization would be to make sure that you preserve that history and make sure that it goes forward. Um, so how do you donate them to the archives? Um, you know, take a look and see what you actually have that you want to donate. And as I said, it could just be copies of your digital records that you want to drag over to a Google Drive for me to, to take for you. Or it could be a box of, uh, you know, old photographs or things that you found in the office that you've just been passing around to each other. Um, so, you know, take a look and see what you have. Give me an email or, or a phone call and let me know what it is that you have and where I can come help you pick it up. Um, you can either drop things off to us here in the lower level of the library or you can um, call me and I'll come bring boxes and pick it up from you over at your office, uh, at your student or organization office. 
Um, I've also met people at their cars and taken it out of the trunk of their cars. So I'm, I'm very flexible on that. Um, you can also add me to your Osprey Hub page, uh, either as a member or an admin. I think uh, Jeff and I were going to try to figure that out. Um, and I can download, you know, different documents that we might want for the archives, or you can add me to your Google Drive um, and share that with me. But do make sure you let the future leadership know, either in one of those readme files that I was showing you or by passing on a note or, or letting them know that, that that's why I'm on the page with you. Um, you know, I don't want them to look at the membership list and say, why is there a librarian on here? She's not our <laughs> advisor. Why is she part of us? Um, so please do um, make sure that you let the membership know that that's why I'm on there too. Um, and we would be happy to, um, you know, if you need a consultation or you need some help getting going with your archives, we'd be more than happy to help with that. Well, I, I have two to-do items now that we've had this conversation. A, I'll make you an administrator of the entire site, so that way you go in and steal anything you want. Oh, and not B, steal, archive. Archive, excuse me, copy. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and, and then the second thing I'll do is convince you to be an advisor for a club. That way you can help them out all the way. So awesome. I'd be happy to. Um, so, and so then once the things come to the archives, um, it's saved forever with a little asterisk there in that uh, we plan to save it forever, but I can't guarantee it will be saved forever since I won't be around forever to make sure that happens. But that's the theory. That's why the archives are here. You know, we have the correspondence from President Bjork going all the way back to the 1960s, you know, talking about wanting to found the college uh, or wanting to create the college and, and start the college. So in theory, uh, as long as the archives are around, as long as the university is around, your organization's history will be around in our archives if we, uh, if we collaborate in this way. What we, do, we actually do as archivists is we take that information, we take those papers, we take those digital files, and we organize it. If you didn't already, we'd prefer if you do it because that, that actually shows more um, of your intent. That shows like how you wanted the things to be organized. And that's even better for people that are researching in the future. Uh, we organize it and then we create like a guide, an index that we call a finding aid to the collection that will help you find things in the future or help other people that are interested in finding the things. Almost like a catalog record, but a little bit more in depth. You can see the one for the student senate minutes on our website if you're interested in seeing what that looks like. And we put it in the acid-free boxes that I mentioned and in those, those special kinds of folders so that the things are preserved longer term. Um, we may end up scanning things, you know, older records and putting them online in the future if, the, if there's interest in them. Uh, but we also just make them available for people to come in and see and use in our reading room here in the special collections area. Um, people can come on down. We've had people want to write histories of their clubs before and they come on down and we pull out everything we can find for them on the topics and, and uh, they go to town with their research and they use all those great primary sources and they use all of their investigative research skills and they come up with these really great histories of their organizations and we'd be happy to do that with you and we'd be happy to help archive your records so that people can do that in the future too that's great uh before we go on is there any like like golden record that you like oh if only i could find for the entire university like is there is there anything missing that you're like man i wish i had blah 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 Oh, I'm sure there is. Oh, 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 there's a smoking gun. Sure, definitely. Um, but nobody, I don't think anyone actually created the record, so we can't, ha we don't have it. But uh, President Bjork's cabin burned down in uh, the early 1970s. Um, he, he was, his office was in a cabin around Lake Fred, and his cabin burned down. And um, nobody claimed responsibility, but a lot of people claim they know who it was, but nobody claimed responsibility. And um, I'm sure nobody wrote down <laughs> who they thought it was. Right, exactly. So, you know, if, if, if we could get somebody to go Watch on the record it. and tell us, that would be great. <laughs> Diane, do you know? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> it, was, it was during a very controversial time in, in Stockton history. There was a student strike and a faculty strike happening at the same time. I, I, I have heard, and this may be total, uh, total total farcical moment but i heard that there was a faculty meeting happening at the time when it started and somebody said hey we better take minutes and take roll on who's here because we know we're going to get blamed hey that's so. a perfect example of why you should take minutes right right exactly <laughs> that's what you always take minutes <laughs> make sure you have a, a plausible deniability right you have a, exactly a, have a uh, cover for your story so uh, I'm going to end this really not not real quick, but I'm going to end this here with it with a, a thought, a proverb. Uh, Robert K. Greenleaf, who is the uh, uh, person who talked about and described servant leadership, 
said that uh, servant leader is a servant first. It begins with a natural feeling that one wants to serve, then the conscious choice to aspire to lead. So what it means is the best kind of leaders are the ones who step up when there is a need. So if you never groom new leadership or you never pass on leadership or you never reach down the mountain and, and, and you know, raise up the people who are trying to be at the top of the mountain, when you jump off the mountain, no one is going to be there. So we really need to make sure that we are planning and taking care of our membership and making sure that other people are involved and their, their needs are also being served with the organization. So I'll end it there with questions. I'll uh, stop my share in case anybody wants to say hi on the camera. And, uh, and does anyone have any questions about uh, archiving or, you know, passing the torch or does anyone have any fun stories about how they either did or didn't get the torch passed to them? I'll just mention the, the, that in the chat, the idea about the writing the histories for the 50th anniversary. I think that's great. I think that would be a great project um, is with our 50th anniversary coming up. And we can certainly highlight some of those on our website. And we can, uh, um, you know, if you want to write the history of your club for us to include, even if your, your club isn't 50 years old, but for us to be able to include that on the, the website for the 50th anniversary, I think would be really interesting. Yeah, we, we know who some of the oldest organizations are, but it's interesting, like, none of them are 50. Well, the Argo is. The Argo is. The, no, then the Argo starting year two? Mm -mm, no. No? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, the Argo is the 50-year organization. Awesome. Yeah. Anyone else have any final questions before I hit stop on the recording? I had a question, and I forgot it, Heather. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, when is the history due for the um, 50th? We're going to start celebrating the 50th in the fall of 2021. Oh, okay. So yeah. we, have, we have time to work on it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I'm, and I'm trying to think, like, there may, there may even be, um, like, opportunities to, um, you know, cross-pollinate with, like, some of the academic subjects for something like this. Like, if you have a class that um, is, you're required to do research with primary sources, or if you're taking mm -hmm. a class that has to do with Stockton or education, you know, you may even be able to do something across, you know, academic subjects with the clubs also. That sounds great. All right. Awesome. Uh, before we log off, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the like and subscribe button because we do news training videos all the time. We do general training videos. We do specific training videos. And we are sort of wrapping up our officer training for the spring of 21. I think this is the second to last session. So uh, check out Osprey Hub if you don't know about the rest of the things. And uh, like I said, like or subscribe. I'm going to push stop on the recording button. Thank you all.